Content presented on the following podcast is for information purposes only. The views and opinion expressed from host and caregivers are solely given based on the experiences of the individuals involved. Because each person is so unique, always consult your physician, physical or occupational therapist, or medical and fitness advice. Are you struggling to help your aging parents or disabled spouse to do everyday personal care tasks? Are you concerned about them falling or you injuring yourself? What is the task that is so difficult for you to help them to do? You are not alone. We can help. Finding a Foothold is a weekly podcast show that invites you to call in and tell us your challenge. Here, you can receive practical tips and strategies from an occupational therapist. And here is your host, Consuela Marshall. Hello, I'm Consuela. Thank you for joining in today. So today on Finding uh, a Foothold, I'm here to just provide some encouraging words to the caregivers out there who are caring for loved ones, whether they are disabled spouses or elderly parents. Uh, There are so many caregivers out there in that role trying to do their life and trying to blend their life into the process of caring for a loved one. Today, I want to discuss the importance of having a plan. So for those of you all who have not met me, thank you for tuning in today. My name is Consuela. I am an occupational therapist. I've been in that field for 27 years and the majority of it doing a lot of home health. Uh, Just seeing clients and seeing caregivers in those roles as they are in some, in often case, thrust into that role overnight due to an injury or an illness of their loved one. And often love scrambling, um, trying to put the pieces together and do what they feel in their heart that they're called to do. And I also have groups of clients that have are not new to caregiving, but seasons change, get worse, or the caregiver's life takes on new responsibilities and things need to shift. And today I want to emphasize the importance of just having a plan. Having a plan of what you want to see done, what you want to have take place in, the, in your life and in the life of your loved ones. And always emphasizing that you will never be able to do it all. No one is. Uh, the caregiving journey, I just do believe in my heart, is a journey that should be done in partnership. Partnership with someone. Someone that's going to shoulder the load for you, be that shoulder that you can lean on, uh, that helping hand, physically or emotionally. Because just a process of caring for someone just comes with so many blows to us physically as we're in there doing the physical work of caring for them. Because we get tired. It's very physical and draining. And not to mention the emotional side of it. The emotional toll that it takes when you're seeing someone that you used to see as this strength and the one that you could go to for help, suddenly not being that person again. They're just a, maybe a shell of who they used to be physically because of strokes or some type of debilitating illness like Parkinson's or just some type of thing going on in their body health-wise that just has just robbed them of who they used to be. And the other side of that, too, is is even just as detrimental is that same a a different loved one and just maybe even physically still looking the same, but mentally and cognitively, they're just not there. Things have just changed in their mental capacity. And it's hard when you have to grieve that loss of not having that pillar that person, that strong person that has always been there for you. And now you're the one in charge, in charge of making critical decisions for them. And it can be very draining. And I can say that from an uh, occupational therapist standpoint, because I've seen it. I've been in thousands of homes. I've calculated it. I've seen them all. But the greatest impact is the one in my home as I was caring for my mom. My mom had numerous strokes. They started when she lived by herself and she had several little mini strokes and with each one of them, her status declined. And it came to the point that she came to live with me and my husband. And it was tough. And me thinking, oh, I'm a therapist, I can do this. I was wrong. Where I had the physical part, 
figured out on how to do the physical work. The emotional part of it was so draining. It took such a big impact on me till I couldn't even think. Think how to do the things that I've been doing for years. Thinking how to problem solve through the physical stuff that I, I should just know like the back of my hand because I do that, do that with patients all the time. I've worked on rehab units. I've worked in skilled nursing units. But when it came to my mom and the emotional impact that it, it took on me, it made me even forget about the things that I already knew. It's just funny how emotional the strain of caring for someone and you thinking you can do it all by yourself, how that impacts the whole picture of how you're going to go through this. And it doesn't, it doesn't end well. It didn't end well for me when I was making a doctor's appointment. Like I've been checking my blood pressure and it is high. What do you think it is? And he said, well, let's talk about it. What's going on in your life? I'm like, oh, I'm caring for my mom. But he said, well, stop right there. How, what are you doing for your mom? And how are you, and who's helping you? I'm like, well, my husband's there and I have sisters that come in. They try to come once a month, want to come one month and want to come and they'll stay the weekend and help. And just in, just sharing that with him and just starting to unload in the doctor's office, everything that I was shouldering on top of going to work, on top of managing caregivers, I didn't realize the impact that it was having on me mentally and physically and my need to make some shifts in the plan that I had created. Because when we're, you're creating a plan for your loved one and as you're entering the, the caregiving role, it cannot only entail what are you going, you going to do for them. It, you need to be number one when you are creating the plan in taking on the role of being taking on the role of being the caregiver is always having you up there too in that number one position. How am I going to take care of my parents, take care of my disabled spouse, and take care of me? It is not take care of them and then I'll get around to taking care of me or I'm okay. I'm okay. It it doesn't matter about me. It's about them. I just got to take care of them. Well, that doesn't, that, that will fly for these short-term illnesses. And there are a lot of short ones, short, short term ones. If they fell and broke their wrist or had carpal tunnel syndrome and you're going through a, some type of a quick rehab and there is a short recovery process to that, we can all do that. We can lay things aside and take care of that need because we can see the end in sight. There's just something about you can see the end in sight and you muster up the courage and the stamina and just that fortitude to say, okay, I'm going to take care of this and see them through this recovery phase. But what happens when this is not a quick fix? When this isn't going to get better, that this is only going to get worse. Then you have to have another plan in place. So today, I just want to leave you here today just thinking about three things that sort of ties in everything I just said. And this was sparked to me about a, a quote I, her, I saw earlier this week, and I'm going to have to read it because I can't remember all of this. And, it, and I heard somebody say it real fast, and they said, if you don't know where you're going, any role will lead you there. I said, I've heard that before. I looked it up. I Googled it. But I couldn't find out who the quote was from. But I was very, it was very insightful on what the commentary about that quote was and I want to just read a couple of lines from a sheet of paper I'm, I'm holding here that sort of gave a lot of food for thought and it really closely correlates with this caregiving role here okay and it says another way of saying that same quote is if you don't have goals your strategy will be anything and you will succeed at reaching every goal you didn't set I thought that was profound that if you don't have the, the goal, let me see that again. If you don't have goals, then your strategy would be just anything. So first of all, as a caregiver, I want you to set goals for your loved one and set goals for yourself. If you're already in this process and you're overwhelmed and there's tears every other day or you're pulling your hair out every day, other day or you're getting that little gray stuff every day, then it's telling you that Maybe you just need to tweak how you're doing it. What in looking at what is your goal? What goals have you set for caring for your parents? 
And what and do you have you included yourself in that? Because if you don't, you will reach some goals you didn't set. And when I saw that, some of the goals that I have seen and I have achieved really great in my life, when I didn't have those clear cut goals on how I'm gonna care, care for my mom, the goals I reached was stressed out, burnt out, upset, bitter, angry, confused about am I really don't even like my mom anymore. Look, it, it got to that point where it was so stressful because when I had, didn't have clear cut goals about what the goals were for her and me, then it just became anything that she wanted. It became anything that anybody wanted me to do because I wasn't focused on what was right for me. So you got to have clear cut goals. And you know, and the goal is you want to take care of them. That is the goal and you want to take care of yourself. So that's number one. That's, that's the first goal. And as caregivers, that's the goal we all have. But number two, that's when it gets different. How? How are you going to do that? And that's when the breakdown comes because you choose a caregiver role because you want to do it. You love your parents. You want to do it. You want to take care of them. Of course, you love yourself and you think you're taking care of yourself. But how do you do it? And that that goes by the diagnosis. What is going on with them? What are the things happening in their body? What are the things going on in your life? What's happening in your body? Those have to be taken into consideration. And you have to look at what type of caregiver you are. Have you moved in with them to help them? That's a whole set of goals. You need to have some clear rules about how that's going to take place. The second little point under this one, bullet point is, have you moved them in with you? Well, that's another whole set of goals, a whole set of bullet points. You need to, dis to decide what are going to be the rules for this setting. If they're living in your house, if you're living in their house, or if they're living in their house. And being able to know when those settings change and, what, and how to make those transitions between the different things. Because things don't often stay the same. Another one is, are they are there caregivers coming into the home? Are, have they transitioned? All, you're already at the point where they're in a long-term care facility. What is your role there? You're still a caregiver. And if you've had to make that decision to transition them into a long-term care facility, then that's what was needed. I know personally for me, I had to make that decision. My mom did not stay in my home until her passing away because her care became too great, too stressful, and I could not wear that many hats. But it didn't mean I wasn't her caregiver anymore. But my role in what I did and how I did shifted. It didn't mean I, did, I, I loved her less. It just meant another, I needed other people on the journey with me to help Number one, that goal we had of taking care of mom, taking care of myself. Placement in the nursing home still meant mom was being taken care of and I was taking care of myself. It was just the point that we arrived and there is no guilt in getting to that point. And the guilt can be decreased and you can hold on to the fact that you're doing the best you can do when you're going back to your goals, taking care of your parents or your spouse and taking care of yourself. There comes a place when that transition, when that transition has, has to take place and it's not, a, it's not an easy one. It really isn't. So we've talked about your goals and then the how, how to do it. Then look, there's 53 million caregivers. We all have different stories. There is no cookie cutter story or formula or strategy to follow. But what you do is you just surround yourself with one of the 53 million people who are doing it. You get advice from them. You look, you look at people who are modeling it well. Don't look at the people who are stressed out and they are burnt out and they're trying to give you advice on how to do it. You want to steer away from them. Because I want to tell you, with the people that I experience, the people I work with personally as coaching them one-on-one, -on -one, and those who I get to the privilege of serving because I still do home health, there are many that do it well. 
Do they have problems? Oh, absolutely they have problems. Do they have bad days? Yes. But they do not operate under a cloud of despair 24 hours a day because they've learned how they keep their priorities, their priorities by going back to the goal of what is their goal of deciding to be a caregiver. And the goal has to be take care of parents, take care of myself. How you take care of parents, I've already discussed, that will not look the same. You have to make the shifts in how you provide the care for them in order to keep the goal for yourself met. And that's taking care of yourself. And if you're trying to do it all in their level of care, it's just just compounding. They're needing more and more and more help and it's just being dumped and dumped and dumped and you're doing it all. You're no longer caring for yourself. Caring for you, caring for your parents need to be number one. My final thought here is, how do you know you've reached your goal? You've set the goals. They're number one, you're number one. Number two, how to do it. A whole list I gave you. They can do it in their house for a while. They can do it in your house. You can move into their house. They can go into assisted living. They can go into long-term placement, all of that. Those are just transitions. You got to find out what's going to work for you in order to meet your goal for yourself. And then the, the, the last thing is, how do you know you've met your goal? For me, my goal was met when my mom went into the nursing home. I had such a level of, it was like a release. There was some guilt. I look, I'm not, I got to say I had to get through that stage of, oh my gosh, I failed my mom. I didn't keep her in my house to the end. I had to go back to what I'm teaching you right now or, or encouraging you with. Did I meet my goal? I'm still taking care of my mom and I'm taking care of myself because I had to realize my husband still needed me. My children still needed me. I still had a job that I needed to, to have. I had to take into all of that in consideration. And I, and I had to come to the, consider, to the fact that me saying me is number one, just like they are number one in that slot too, that it's not being selfish. Because the more I keep me up there and taking care of me, the better I could take care of my mom even when she was in a long-term care facility. And it, it took, it had its own stuff that comes with them being in a nursing home. I had to put out some fires, but when you show up, they know the, the, the fire squad is coming and I'm gonna point out things that I think should be handled a little bit differently, but you grow into that role and you accept their limitations of what the nursing home can do. And one thing it did allow for me, it, made, it allowed me to be more of my mom's daughter again. <sighs> I don't want to get emotional. Okay. It took some of the load. <clears throat> I'm going to take a breather here. <clears throat> oh, out of providing the care all the time. <sighs> Why does this happen to me whenever I have this discussion? <sighs> it allowed me to be her daughter a little bit more. I don't think I could get through this without the tears, you all. <sighs> Okay, I'm trying. I can love her. I can be there for her, her emotionally because I didn't need all the emotional support anymore. I was letting someone else take some of that off of me. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> this is like not going right. So I'm about to do a lot of editing here, but it's real. This is what we go through as caregivers. And... You know, and this has been years, you all. My mom has been gone, oh my gosh, at least five years. And then even as a coach, I, I love entering. I, I love getting back to this emotion because it helps me connect with my clients. It helps me remember where I was. It helps me help them to see that you don't have to remain where you are in despair. That it's going to be hard. I, I, it's, it's hard being a caregiver. But it, you know what? It, it never consumed my life to the point that I felt like I was no longer me because I started putting the brakes on. When I started talking to my doctor and even didn't even know I needed to, 
he pushed the button to let me know that you're in over your head, Consuelo. It made me start thinking about what I was doing that was too much. So for those of you all who are here, I appreciate you listening in and I thank you so much. For those who are going to see this later, I just want to encourage you, it takes a plan. I have this $4.99 ebook. You know, it's just really inexpensive, but it's one of those things I want caregivers to start thinking about what are the tough parts you're doing? We can all say this whole journey is hard. It is, but it's not always the same hard for everybody. That ebook makes you look at the dressing, the bathing, the grooming, the toileting, the bills, the housework, every aspect of caregiving, the managing of their medical aspects. It makes you look at what is it all that you're doing. And for some people, they don't have a problem with the toileting and the uh, undergarment changes and all of that. That's not the hard part. It's sometimes the transfers of getting them in and out of bed. It's different things for different people that push that panic button, that push that stress button. Until you identify what that button is, you don't know how to put it out. You don't know how to calm it down. You don't know how to find a solution because then you think everything is wrong. Because that one thing that... It's just the thing that sets you off just makes the whole world look black. I want you, for those of you all who are who experienced that, I want to invite you to uh, purchase the book, $4.99. It's just a guidebook. It's just something to keep you thinking and making you identify what are some things that are not working. But then from that book, you need to start looking at solutions who to bring into your story, what are those modifications you need to do to keep you in the number one spot right there with your loved one. It can be done. I've done it. I've coached a lot of people who've done it. And I see people as an OT profession to a patient, they're doing it. How I enter into the story. Look, I don't have all the answers, but I make you think. And when you think of the problem that you have, I can give you tons of solutions because I have treated tons of people with all types of diagnosis. And this is just a way of you de developing a plan that works for you. Well, that, that ends our session today. I appreciate everyone who's here. And for those of all who know uh, about the Clubhouse app called Caregivers Finding Hope, and the difference with that platform is it allows me to hear your voice and you can talk back to me. On this one, it's just sort of one-sided. I'm doing all the talking. My goal is just to help you. Help you with something that you can use or pass on to somebody else with the goal of just bringing hope and healing to caregivers out there because otherwise you feel so alone. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Finding the Foothold podcast. I hope you found information helpful for your situation and you're beginning to envision yourself as a successful caregiver. Remember, you cannot do this alone. So if you have a question to ask, I encourage you to call in by visiting the findingafoothold.com website and using the call-in button. You can find this podcast on our website and on all the major podcast streaming sites. Share our podcast with others who are also navigating this challenging caregiving journey. Join us again next time. Finding a Foothold carries about 